Hey everybody, as you know, we've got a couple people out sick in the Live Fit gym right now. And so I really wanted to talk to you about what to do when you're sick in terms of exercising. And really, honestly, the short answer is don't. Please stay away from people, don't share your germs. When you're first getting sick or you're already sick, but you're still getting sicker, that's when you're contagious. And it's just not cool to share it with people. So don't go to work. Definitely don't go to the gym. There's too many germs in the gym anyway. Stay away from the people you love and just get well. So as far as I'm concerned, there's really four categories of being sick. The first one is a little bit sick. Maybe it's just starting to come on, you know, you're not really sure how sick you're going to get. My advice, do not work out for 48 hours. Get nine or more hours of sleep a night, drink plenty of water, all of that sort of stuff. Take evasive action, basically, and wait and see where it goes. Because if you get in right at the beginning of when you're starting to catch something and really hit it hard, you might avoid being really sick altogether. And I mean, that's worth more than money, really, isn't it? So 48 hours of rest, nine hours plus of sleep each night, and just see where it goes. The next category of sick is a little bit more sick. You know, it's like you're just starting, then you get to a little bit more sick. What should you do for workouts? You shouldn't. Put your kettlebell down. Do not do that when you are sick. Your body needs all of its resources to fight the bugs. You do not need to be wiping yourself out with workouts. So I recommend if you're a bit sick, go for a brisk walk each day. And I mean brisk, I do not mean power walk. I mean, move your arms and legs and move it along. Um, but don't knock yourself into the ground with it. About a mile is the absolute most. Um, but you know, get out there and get your blood moving a little bit, but nothing more than that. Now the next category is quite sick. And if you're quite sick, which means that you have trouble getting through your activities of the day, you know, you maybe need to go to the store to stock up on food and you're like, oh, I'm just too tired to go, you're quite sick. All you want to do in terms of exercise is take a very gentle walk once or twice a day just to get some fresh air and get your blood moving. But when I say gentle walk, I mean you could be holding the hand of a toddler or walking with my grandmother who toddled along very slowly. You're just out there to get some fresh air and nothing more than that. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then the final category of sick is very sick. And very sick, I equate to, I want to crawl under my duvet and just die. If you are very sick, don't do anything. Stay in bed, drink lots of water, chicken broth, whatever it is, and just rest. Take your vitamins, go outside for 10 to 15 minutes, two or three times a day, maybe a little more, and just, <coughs> I'm sorry, and catch some sunshine. Um, but that's all you want. That little bit of sunshine will warm you down to your bones and help you get through your illness. Um, but you do not want to do any kind of exercise when you're that sick. Now, there's a few things you can do when you're sick, whether it's just getting sick or whether you're very sick. There's a few things you can do to help yourself get a lot better a lot faster. One is to make sure that you drink your 96 ounces of water every day. You want to flush those germs through as fast as you can. Obviously, I recommend not eating sugar anyway, but particularly not when you're sick. Anything sugary, even when you have that sore throat and you want a popsicle or something, sugar lowers your immune system. So, you know, the popsicle might feel good at the moment, but then it takes you longer to get better because you're compromising your immunity with sugar. So ice chips are a way better choice. Um, I also recommend elderberry and zinc lozenges. My doctor put me onto these. The brand I like is called Now, N-O-W. They're six or seven dollars for 90 of them. Um, follow the directions on the package. My doctor recommended taking a few more in the first few days. You don't want to overdo zinc though, so you can't overdo those long term. Um, but I swear those little elderberry and zinc lozenges have saved me a number of times. Um, obviously, a lot of vitamin C is great. Pure ascorbic acid is really inexpensive and tends to give horrible stomach aches. So I recommend a buffered vitamin C. It might say raw, it might say buffered, it might say whole food vitamin C, it might say vitamin C with bioflavonoids. Anything like that is going to be gentler on your system than just pure ascorbic acid. Um, you'll want to start with about 2,000 milligrams, and you can do that every few hours. And this is the advice from my doctor. This is, this is her advice. Check with your own doctor by all means. But you can do a couple thousand milligrams every few hours for the first day or two. You'll know when you've had too much vitamin C because your stomach will start to cramp and hurt and you'll get the runs definitely back off when you start to feel that stomach cramping, start to take less. For some people that happens pretty quickly with vitamin C. For other people, luckily myself included, I can take piles of it and it just doesn't seem to affect me for which I am very grateful when I'm sick. The last thing you can do is to use a neti pot. 
not everybody loves these. And personally, I don't like it at all. And I've got to be pretty desperate to use it. But I swear, if you are getting sick and you do this, you will save yourself. The neti pot is basically almost like a little flower pot waterer. Um, you want to fill it up with warm water. You're going to pour this through your nose, though, so make sure that water is not too warm. Pour a little on the inside of your wrist, you know, to check the temperature. It should be warm. It should be nothing like hot. You do not want to burn the inside of your nose, just warm. So in a pot this size, it takes maybe about close to 12 ounces, 10 to 12 ounces of water. Use the warm water and about a half a teaspoon of sea salt, that really um, gray or green sea salt, the strong stuff. Fully dissolve the salt. You do not want to get a piece of salt in your nose. Make sure it's fully dissolved. You could even do that in a clear glass first to make sure it's all dissolved and then put it in the pot. And then you'll be grateful that I'm not actually going to demonstrate with water because trust me, this is gross. You put the pot to your nostril and bend forward over the sink or over the bathtub because yes, this does make a mess and have a huge pile of Kleenex or hankies or whatever you're using ready to go. You'll want to pour about a quarter of the pot of water through one side of your nose. So you put it to your nostril, bend forward and tip your head and pour. And the water is gonna go in one side of your nose and through and out the other side. And once your nose starts to clear, it'll literally be like just pouring it straight out except it's going through. The other thing it tends to do if you don't have your head far enough forward or if you're unlucky like me is some of it will go down the back of your throat. So you'll be coughing and hacking and spitting out salty snotty water as well. It is gross. I know it's gross, but the salty water kills the germs and you really can help yourself a whole lot by doing this. So pour a quarter of it through, blow your nose like crazy and then switch sides. Same thing again to your nostril, lean forward, tilt your head down and forward and start to pour and it'll just all come pouring out. Equally gross from the other side, do each side twice and then the pot will be empty. I know, like I said, completely gross. I swear to you it works. The final thing you can do is the wet sock treatment. And again, one of my natural doctors gave me this one. You'll need a small pair of cotton socks and a big thick pair of woolen like ski socks or something like that. If you don't have wool, use another, you know, really thick, like warm pair of winter socks, but wool works best. So for wet sock treatment, you put your little cotton socks into some iced water, just in a big coffee cup or something like that. While those socks are getting cold and wet, you put your feet into a bucket of hot water. And when I say hot, I mean your skin should turn pink. It should be the temperature of a hot bath, but do not burn your feet. Hotter will not be better there. Just the, the warmest, close to hot water, as, you know, as warm as you can stand it, but do not burn your feet. Soak your feet for about 10 minutes while the socks are soaking in the icy water. Then pull the socks out of the icy water and wring them out so that they're not dripping anymore, but you don't want to wring them so much that they um, like get warm or too dry or anything. They should be damp and freezing cold. Then pull your feet out of the warm water and dry them off really quickly. Again, you don't want your feet to cool down. You just want to get them dry really fast and then put your hot feet into those freezing cold socks. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, this works. Then put your thick socks, which will be dry, over the top of the wet socks and go to bed. And apparently something about the freezing socks on your warm feet and your, your body will be trying to dry them while you're sleeping overnight, that it creates like this pulsing for your immune system and it's pumping your blood around your body trying to uh, warm up and dry out those socks. It works. I had to get really sick before I was willing to try this one. I thought it sounded ridiculous. It totally works. Now, whenever I get sick, it's one of the first things I do. So please try these out. If you have any other remedies that work really well for you, leave us some comments on F Facebook or on our site. I'd love to hear from you about it. Um, but if you are sick, do not exercise. Try whichever of these remedies work for you. See your doctor, nip it in the bud. Do not suffer and put your kettlebell down until you're feeling better. Once you're 48 hours away from being sick, you've been feeling well for two days, your energy's back up, then it's time to work out again.